So we're brewing up a juicy New England IPA. Some people call it a juicy Nipa. We're going for that citrus, melon, that big bang of just fruit juices. Basically like just a juicy, juicy juice man. Oh yeah! And basically we're just making a really simple grain bill. Nothing complicated. Nine and a half pounds of Pilsner, one and a half pounds of flaked barley, one and a half pounds of flaked oats, and one pound of flaked wheat. Make sure to watch the video all the way through. We'll be doing a tasting at the end. So we got our nine and a half pounds of Pilsner. And then we have our four pounds of flaked adjuncts. Toss them into the rest of the grains. Water profile's been adjusted to enhance the New England IPA style we're after. Looking for a little bit of that haze. We're gonna mash at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes. 60 minute mash is complete. We're gonna go ahead and turn the pump on. So we're gonna go ahead and just start the old uh, pulling the basket out. While it's draining for the next couple minutes, I'm just gonna hit the AM button to turn it to manual mode. And we're gonna set it to 100% of power to get this thing up to a boil. And then hit set and you're good. So we got the, the basket on an angle. Uh, it's gonna drain a little bit more grains uh, into this bucket. You can go ahead and just dump the sweet wort back into the kettle after it drains for a few minutes. Uh, when you put it on an angle, it just gets a little bit more out. And then we're gonna start bringing this up to a boil. We put it to 100%. I'm gonna add our hot basket. And that creates a nice little gap around the edges. And that will allow the steam to come out. We are up to a boil. We're gonna boil for 75 minutes. We're gonna add some sugar. With 60 minutes left in the boil, we're just gonna do a half a pound. 60 minutes left in the boil. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add our sugar. We're doing half a pound. We're just gonna go ahead and just sprinkle that right in. We're gonna put some in there just for fun. We got 10 minutes left in the boil. I'm gonna get my plate chiller hooked up. And you just wanna make sure that you have good gaskets and there's, there's a good gasket for you. We're gonna go ahead and get our water out. Wort out into pump in. Wort out into wort in on the plate chiller. Make sure it's locked. From out of the plate chiller, this will go back into the kettle. We're out, I believe. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the ball valve. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pump on, and we're gonna recirculate through the wort chiller for the last 10 minutes of the boil. So we've been recirculating for 10 minutes. Everything is that boiling wort going through it. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the heat off. We're gonna leave the pump on, and then I'm gonna turn the cooling water on, and we're gonna chill this to 180 so we can add our hops, get those good oils, get that good hop aroma. So I'm gonna get our hops ready. So we got Willamette, Mosaic, El Dorado, Citra, and Centennial, and then we'll dry hop with the same strains. For big hoppy beers like this, you may need an extra hop basket to fit all the hops. You can buy an extra one on our website. So it's doing a little whirlpool. You can see the hops are fully submerged in the wort, so they're getting the contact they need. We'll let this hang out for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna turn the cooling water on and then we're just gonna recirculate until we're at pitching temp around 65 or so. And again, this water is still warm. You wanna clean off your baskets. All right, so we are at pitching temp and we're just gonna turn the cooling water off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the pump off. Move the hose into the fermenter. And this has a really good citrusy smell right now. Uh, pretty excited about it. And if you hold the hose like this, you can get some really nice aeration. You can 
Let's see the bubbles. And then we're gonna kill the pump. And I always like to sanitize my yeast packets just because they've been out, out in the wild. I'm gonna give it a good shake. And then these are nice because it just has a pull tab. And we're gonna go ahead and add the Imperial Yeast Ale Juice and put our lid on. Before we aerate, actually, let's take a, a gravity reading if we can. I'm gonna go with uh, 1060. Uh, 1060, be a decent, decent size IPA, not too big, not too small. So we're gonna aerate for 60 seconds. So we're gonna go ahead and get our airlock installed. And I always just use star sand. I always use a little bowl like this. That way I have it when I'm ready to add the airlock. Airlock is in. I use a piece of tape to tape the temperature probe to into the fermenter until Monday. And then we'll start dry hopping. And we'll probably do that late, late in the day Monday. So we will see you on Monday. All right, we brewed the Juicy Nipa Friday. It is Tuesday. I wanted to dry hop it Monday, but things got away from me in the office. <clears throat> All right, so we had a bit of a blowout. Um, so fermentation was super active. Probably should have put a blow off valve on it. Not a huge deal. I'll clean the lid off and we'll put a new airlock in. Go ahead and take this airlock out. The key to opening these buckets is to have a bucket removal tool. We should have these on our website, um, so you can find them there. You can see that fermentation is still really active, and that's one of the tricks with brewing these style beers, is you want to add the first round of hops while fermentation is still active. So I always like to sanitize my hop bag. All right, so we got two ounces of Citra, one ounce Centennial, one ounce El Dorado, one ounce Mosaic, and about a quarter ounce of Willamette that I just had laying around that I wanted to use up. All right, I got my lid. We're just gonna go ahead and add our airlock. It smells delicious, fermentation's real happy, so we'll be back. It's been three days since our first dry hop edition. Uh, we're gonna remove those hops today and then we're gonna add our second edition, which is two ounces of lemon drop hops. And then we'll let those sit for another three days, remove those, and continue fermentation. All right, so the Juicy Nipa is finally ready to keg. All right, we're gonna do our final gravity. I'm gonna say we're looking like 10, 14. So our final gravity is 1014. Sample tastes great. Kind of what I'm looking for. Not a whole lot of bitterness, but enough to balance it out. And then just that hop forwardness. So we'll see what it tastes like when it carbs up. We're gonna call that good. With all the dry hop additions, we lost a little bit of volume, but we're pretty close to a full keg. So I'm really, really not too worried about that. So I just put the keg into the kegerator. So what I'm gonna do now is attach the CO2 line to the keg, and then I'm gonna go ahead and open up the pressure relief valve to purge any oxygen that's in the keg. The Juicy Nipa is finished and carved. Definitely um, got the haziness we were after. Really, really nice aroma. Our starting gravity was 1060. Our final gravity was uh, 1014, uh, which is just a bit over 6%. This is dangerous. Um, I mean, you don't you don't taste any of the alcohol at all. Super balanced, really nice body to it. Super smooth, just super juicy. I mean, juicy is probably the best way to put it. Almost like a grapefruit juice or an orange juice, pineapple. You get those lemon drop hops at the very end, which is kind of nice. Just leaves a little bit of bitterness on the tongue. I'd brew it the same way again, but if I were to change anything, I might change the lemon drop for you know maybe a mosaic or a, a citra um we'll land it you know something like that so we will continue to brew beers continue to drink beers leave a comment 
let us know what you're brewing. If you've got some great recipes you want to share, definitely get in touch with us. Um, always looking, looking to brew some good recipes. But overall, I highly recommend brewing this. Uh, until the next brew day, guys and girls, cheers.